Um, good afternoon, Professor Kyle. I uh, hope you're feeling better. Um, today, me and my group are going to talk about the Center County budget. Um, over the past couple weeks, we've been investigating the budget. We've talked to Denise, and we've learned a lot. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Jill to get us started. Thank you, Russell. So jumping right into the budgetary process. So we met with Denise Abel, uh, who is the Director of Financial Management and the Deputy Administrator of Center County Government. And she actually has been in this position for about 20 years. Um, so she's very knowledgeable on the county. Um, so she walked us through the budget. And uh, so the budget packet she compiles and then is then sent out to the department heads in July. Um, they then can make any adjustments that they see fit for their year. Um, and then by December 1st, the budget is considered in, in its tentative phase until it is then officially adopted uh, December 22nd. Um, so the structure of the government um, that she kind of walked us through was the commissioners, who you can see are at the top, um, who are then followed by her, who's the director of administration. And then underneath her um, are all of the department heads um, who she works closely with. So some key roles in the process, um, as I said, uh, Denise, Denise is the Director of Financial Management and Deputy Administrator. Um, so if there are any objections with the government, or I'm sorry, with the budget, uh, they come to her first and then um, they can object to the board if they see fit. Um, so how she crafts the budget is she looks at the history, um, she looks at five year history and three year projections um, for deciding what the budget for each department should be. Um, she stated that she has a very conservative approach, so she doesn't add any revenue to the budget until it is in writing. Uh, she also stated that a really important part to the job is remaining neutral. She said the budget is kind of the easier part, the harder part is dealing with the politics and trying to really uh, not take any sides and remain neutral throughout the process. Um, she then spoke on the commissioner's role in the process, and uh, he meets with department heads. She said he really values face time uh, with the department heads and that each commissioner kind of has different priorities throughout their term. Um, she stated this specific commissioner uh, was very passionate about revamping the 911 plan, which Mike is going to touch on uh, in a minute. And then the controller watches over the commissioner as well. Um, so a couple other specifics and details she explained to us. Uh, the balance 2015 budget is 80,890,246 uh, with no tax increase for the year. There actually has been no tax increase uh, since 2010, um, which is pretty great. And they have a 97 to 98% tax collection rate, um, which is high. Uh, so the budget is very comprehensive. It's a very well-crafted budget that has actually received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for the past 16 years. Um, this award uh, is judged in areas as such as document design, user friendliness, and other areas. Um, so since the state and federal money has not come through yet, um, they will have to take out a $10 million loan until that money comes through, um, until the tax revenue comes through of $20 million. Um, so that was something she spoke on as well. Um, she also let us know that departments act on the fiscal year while the budget is on the calendar year. Um, so she felt that, uh, that this is something she has to work with department heads on to um, mitigate any differences. I'm now going to pass it off to Mike to talk about the uh, capital projects. Thanks, Jill. Now, while Jill went into more of the formal process for the budget and its various details, I'm going to talk more about what is the purpose of a county budget, and that is to provide human services and capital projects for its citizens. So, there are five types of human services that the county offers um, its citizens. The first being the children and youth which are just various service projects geared towards children, as well as this program called Early Intervention, where they try to interfere with children and young teenagers that are abusing drug and alcohol and try to help them prevent any further problems. In addition to children and youth, there's adult services, which has various programs such as services and support, which is just various countywide service-sponsored events. There's a homeless program, which serves over 1,369 children and adults throughout the whole county as well as a food commodities program, which runs eight food banks over the entire county. Uh, in addition to that, there is the Office of Aging, which is primarily driven by residents of over 60 years old who have reports of abuse or neglect, poor treatment, um, and so the county tries to interfere with this and provide support for these residents. 
In addition to those three categories, there's also the transportation services, which provides three programs, the first being the meal delivery program, which primarily delivers home meals to seniors, as well as the countywide paratransit shared ride program. This works along with the medical assistance transportation program and essentially provides transportation to citizens all throughout the county. If you're an older citizen who needs help getting to medical appointments and various other appointments, uh, it is free of charge and entitled to you, whereas for everyone else in the county, they are able to use the transportation, but at a small fee. Uh, the last human services program offered by the county is the Mental Health and Intellectual Disabilities. And here, um, there's various services, such as service coordina coordination, speech therapy, special instructions, all these services geared towards the intellectually uh, disabled or mentally challenged, trying to provide support for them, for their families, for, and to eliminate stigma, and facilitate independence and inclusion into county society. Now, with these five human services the county offers, there are only two that are entitled, as in no matter the funding, no matter any sort of cap, the residents are entitled to these. And they are the Children and Youth Services and Early Intervention. Now, in addition to human services offered by the county, the county also uses its budget to provide capital projects for the county, which will ultimately help benefit the citizens. Uh, one, the most recent one is the 911 system that Jill mentioned earlier. That has to do with covering the entire county um, with cell phone coverage, as in the past commissioner championed for this idea to where they installed more service towers, which means now 98% of the county is covered meaning if you go anywhere, 98% of the county can receive a 911 phone call, which is a very exciting initiative for the county. Additionally, they have courthouse renovations planned. These renovations are planned for the uh, implementation of a grand jury. The most recent D DA decided to institute a grand jury rather than just a normal civil court, and with that comes the need for renovating the courthouse, which is what they are planning. And this all um, I sum up to a Capital, budget, uh, capital projects budget in 2015 of 7.5 million dollars. And you can see, as you can see, the capital project, projects budget is broken down into a pie chart. Now, the majority of the budget is allocated towards the 911 project, but as well as the Temple Court renovations, with a few other various capital projects worked throughout. But uh, the uh, in addition to the capital projects, there's a going area of concern for the county that they are looking to resolve, and that has to do with the correctional facility. Now, uh, inmates have risen from 186 to 220 over the span of 2006 to 2013, and with the additional inmates come additional costs. And the average cost for an inmate is about $40,000 per year, which led to a, an operational cost rising from $5 million in 2005 to $9 million in 2015. And that is something that got the, the county has to realize going forward how they're going to account for these costs. And that's pretty much all I have in the Human Services Capital Projects Department. I'm going to pass it on to Russell, who's going to talk about Penn State's impact on the county. Hey, Professor Kyle, I'm back. So now we're going to talk about Penn State and State College and kind of their relationship. So Penn State is essentially the biggest entity within Center County. And Center County, from a budget standpoint, needs to use Penn State and kind of take, not necessarily take advantage of Penn State, but use Penn State in certain ways to get revenue from them and help them succeed in their budgetary issues. There are numerous ways that Penn State affects the county's budget, which I'm about to talk about right now. Okay, so the first way that Penn State directly impacts the county's budget is through the Penn, is through the Penn State impact fee. This impact fee covers all the negative consequences that Penn State brings to the county. These things include incarcerations on game day, extra police force that needs to be hired for certain Penn State type events, pollution produced by the school, and also any other negative kind of legal thing that Penn State students do in and around the county. This helps cover, this essentially covers all the, the uh, legal costs for the county and helps them not have to use budget out of their tax revenue to cover these essential things. The next thing, the next way that Penn State helps the county out is called the Penn State In Kind Act. The Penn State In Kind Act allows the county to use things such as research, 
databases, and facilities, all free of charge for the county. Databases often cost millions of dollars to produce and maintain, which a large university like Penn State has some of the best databases in the country. And for the county to be able to use this, this is a huge cost saving and a huge advantage for research. Also included in research is the use of Penn State students and faculty. Oftentimes, if the county needs to do research on a specific topic, the school has already done research, or they will be willing to help the county out and do it for free. Lastly, the use of facilities is free in certain circumstances for the county. So let's say the county needs to host a dinner and they don't know where to do it. They can reach out to Penn State, set up a deal, and set up a deal, let's say, at the Nittany Lion Inn. And something can be worked out where the Nittany Lion Inn, which is generally a large fee to reserve, the county could get for free because of this Penn State being kind act. All of the, these, these two things essentially decrease the county's bottom line significantly, which is an advantage over most counties, because most counties do not have a large university like this will, willing to help them out in these types of ways. The last way that Penn State will help out, and Penn State is just giving so much to the county as I speak of this, it's incredible. The last way that Penn State helps out is if they see a cause that they think is beneficial for the county, whether it economically makes sense for Penn State or not, they think it's a good social cause, they will donate. So as Mike talked about the 911 plan, Penn State donated $4 million to the 911 plan because they thought it would help their students out. God forbid they got into a rough situation and they needed to call 911. They wanted to make sure the safety of their students was the number one priority. So they donated $4 million, helped the county out, helps the county decrease their bottom line, helps get this 911 project done faster, and everybody in the county is a winner, Penn State and the county budget. Um, next, there are also some indirect impacts that Penn State has on the county. The first one is revolves around the hotel business. Hotels in State, Col in State College and Center County essentially revolve around football weekends at Penn State and, and graduation and other fun, all pretty much all Penn State related events. So they're booked on certain weekends and vacant on other weekends. So it's not a thriving hotel business, but there is business, and regardless of the price, the hotels are going to be sold out on certain weekends, and other weekends are going to be vacant. So essentially, there's no tourism in, this, in the county other than Penn State. That being said, Center County has put a hotel tax on the cost of a, of a room per night, and they use this tax to help fund tourism for the county. And this is not Penn State tourism, this is to help increase tourism in other areas of the county to help make another attraction out, outside of Penn State for the county. We think this is a good tax because it is an easy way to get revenue. However, we also think there needs to be something else substantial, and Chris will talk about this a little bit later, but just implementing a tax is not going to is not going to be enough to help bring in other businesses and create other tourist attractions in the county. The last, the last thing that we discussed in our meeting at the county town hall is the jail renovations. There is a there is a probability that Belfont will renovate their jail and make it more of a rehabilitation center for inmates about to be released to the public. They will get money for the state, so this will not impact the budget too much. However, there, there may be a social issue. Since this will be a rehab facility for the state, felons from outside of Center County will be brought to Center County to be rehabbed, and once they are here, they'll be rehabbed and let go in Center County. If they are rehabbed well, this won't be a problem, but if they are not, we may have an excess amount of felons running around the county. This could decrease safety at Penn State and although we do not, we as a group don't think this will happen, it could eventually hurt the admissions at Penn State if this becomes too much of a problem. So keep an eye on what happens with the jail in the next couple of years and see how it impacts Penn State. So with all this being said, Center County relies on Penn State for taxes and a lot of other services. However, this is, this is good, however, there needs to be another way for the county to rely on rely on other things, such as other businesses, which Chris will talk to you about.
Thanks, Russell. So what I'd like to talk about today is the business impact of State College and how State College has influenced um, different businesses within the county and how State College uh, impacts the county as a whole. So starting off, um, one thing that's really interesting is um, downtown State College and the State College Improvement District. So right now, um, State College has its own committee of people. And in this committee, um, they work on maintaining and making sure that the downtown area is nice, um, looks well, and has a lot of businesses. Now, although that might be good for State College, it might not necessarily be good for the county as a whole. So um, one good example of this is um, the Nittany Mall. So uh, originally with the construction of the mall, they wanted to have a lot of, um, a lot of shops, a lot of stores, make it a much larger mall. But unfortunately, um, State College, with its power and with the improvement district, really did not want to take away um, any business from the downtown area. So what they did was they um, worked their political magic and made it possible for the mall to be built, which sat satisfied some people, but made sure it was smaller and that most of the um, main attractions remained downtown um, in State College. Um, so that kind of brings me to some of um, the uh, power that State College has. So State College, um, since it has um, so much influence due to um, the university being located here, um, they can kind of bully and um, control other people, especially because of all the tax revenue they bring in. So though they, direct, they can't directly tell um, the surrounding township to do something, uh, a lot of times they listen to the advice of State College uh, because of all the benefits they get from the university. So talking about uh, something else is the high tax revenue. So this brings me to some of the tax implications. So for State College, um, since there's so many people here and since the university is located here, um, they can raise taxes pretty high because they always know that people are going to be here to support the university, support the students, uh, students are going to live here. And although that, that's fine because of the university, it's actually caused a lot of other businesses to leave the area. The reason being is that State College and Center County have uh, or has rather high taxes compared to um, other areas in central Pennsylvania. So a lot of companies have decided to leave um, to become closer to different shipment points um, or customers. Uh, and so right now, um, it's kind of an awkward timing in um, State College uh, business because most of the businesses located in State College and Center County are actually supporting the university. Um, so what we think would be a really good recommendation would be to implement um, more of a, an industrialized zone. Um, this zone will have uh, reduced taxes. Um, those, ta those reduced taxes hopefully will encourage new businesses to come move in. Um, when they move in, um, they'll be able to hire people, uh, provide some, some new infrastructure, be, they'll be buying a lot of things. So that's gonna help the economy as a whole and produce um, a lot more tax revenue um, at the end of the day. Um, and we think that this will help revitalize um, Center County and make more attractions, give more reasons for people to come here, um, and then make it um, a much better county as a whole. Um, and lastly, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the politics that do go on here. Um, I know before I mentioned that um, State College is influencing the uh, Nittany Mall, but it's also hard for businesses because um, certain things happen, uh, or certain certain things are required, such as getting a building permit. And um, a good example is that recently, um, a new Italian restaurant wanted to get this building permit, but they weren't allowed to. The reason why they weren't allowed to is because other Italian restaurants had a lot of say. They, they've been around for a long time. They have people connected in politics. So, for example, um, Mario's and Don Fado's, um, they didn't really want the competition, so uh, they talked to their people, and the new Italian restaurant didn't get a building permit and couldn't open. So that's something that's really not good for the county as a whole. Uh, the county is a big um, and a lot easier for people to um, open businesses, start businesses, um, and really work on that um, capitalistic market economy. And we think, we think if this happens, um, then a lot more businesses will come into State, state College, come into Center County, um, and help the county grow as a whole. Um, so after that, I'd like to pass it on to Nate to talk about some more recommendations that we have. Thanks, Chris. Uh, one thing that Denise brought up when we went to meet with her was consolidation. Uh, and we're going to talk about consolidation in two pieces. First of which being uh, the consolidating of county government buildings and also uh, the consolidation of different municipalities within the county. 
First, we're going to touch on county government buildings. Um, the county has several buildings, including the Willow Bank building, courthouse, courthouse annex, the sheriff's office, Temple Court building, and election house buildings, of which there are two. Um, when you look at the maintenance costs in the budgets between 2011 and 2015, they've increased from 270000 to uh, 748000 in 2015. That's almost a half million dollar increase over a four year span. So we think that if some of the these buildings could be consolidated, it would save the company, or excuse me, would save the county a lot of money. Uh, now moving on, uh, something else that Denise brought up are the five magisterial district judges. Uh, these include Center Region, Center Hall, Phillipsburg, and uh, two in State College. Now the key issue here is Center Hall. Uh, Center Hall caseload has fallen greatly in recent years and now only brings in only $73,000. When you look at the next lowest uh, income, it's $113,000. So clearly there's a very large drop off there. Um, we believe that the overhead costs for the county could be decreased if Center Hall was combined with one of these other magisterial districts. Now moving on to consolidating municipalities. Uh, we believe that if the municipalities were um, able to be consolidated, it would help with personnel costs, rent, electric, and automobiles such as police cars and fire trucks. Um, also, the distribution of wealth uh, in the county would be greatly improved. Like Chris mentioned, State College brings in uh, the most wealth by a long shot, and we believe that if State College could be combined with Ferguson and Patton Townships and other townships around the county that the county as a whole would really improve. Now we're going to wrap things up. Overall, we think the budget's in very good shape. Uh, there are some areas of concern, but they have been um, they have been acknowledged, and the county is currently addressing them. Uh, as Russ touched on, uh, the county has a great relationship with Penn State which is very important because it's clearly the biggest attraction in the county. Um, we did have a couple recommendations, uh, one of which was the industrial zone recommended by Chris in order to uh, encourage new business within the county um, by lowering taxes because everywhere else in the county, the taxes are extremely high. And also I touched on consolidation, which could help the county government and um, different municipalities within the county save on overhead costs. Um, as Joe mentioned, uh, this is an award-winning award budget, and as a group, we believe that uh, Center County will be in a very strong financial position moving forward. Thank you.